阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Thank you, everyone,、uh, for coming to our session. So we are on our. I haven't count. I've been counting since then because it's been two weeks. But、uh, we on our chapter three now. So we're talking about Tai San Gan Ying Pian, the treaties on response and retributions today. So I got feedback, and、um, I'll cut down a bit on this explaining part and put more、um, kind of like a Q and A or kind of like a question, and then we can talk about it together after we learn about what the phrases is, and then we'll go into the you know the details. That way, we can actually share our ideas and stuff. So yeah, let's begin. So what do we have here? Crimes and offenses sounds like a legal course, but it's not.、Uh, we're just talking about karma here, basically. It's karma, and、um, today we have three sets of、um, phrases to talk about.、Uh, three, three sets of phrases.、Um, this one is part two, because we got like thousands, like we got so many、um, phrases in the、um, in the slides. I mean, in the book itself. So it needs to be categorized properly. That otherwise we we can't、um, how to say it's too much yeah, in one go. So just for the interest of explaining, so this one is easily done by people in authority. Doesn't mean that we don't do it,、uh, because we, one way or the other we might be an elder to someone or in in a position on in charge of taking care of someone else, you know, as a parent, as a, a sister, as a you know maybe you have a baby sister or you have a you know. Cousins, young cousins, taking care of them. So this kind of、um, thing、uh, creates a how to say a sense of responsibility. You know, the 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 we need to know what is right, what is wrong,、uh, in order to navigate properly in our life. Because, for example, like Alex is a、uh, you know she's managing her own、uh, tutoring center, and so people in people in charge of things need to have a certain set of goal and principle. Otherwise, they can't、um, navigate smoothly.、Uh, it will, I don't know, like losing,、um, like in the Big Bang,、uh, working. Everything has code of conduct. Everything has its, you know, principles. But、um, this one is more on the, in like you know what what your moral is. You know what 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 where do you stand in、uh, in relation to you know、uh, what is right and what is wrong. So this one in Chinese, 是非不当 In English, translate as to consider evil to be just and good to be evil. Sounds like a very simple and common sense phrase, but、um, when things happen in real life, things get muddy in real life. So what we're learning now is this is like a manual to real life, and real life does not have a clean, clear cut good and bad. It's always muddy. It's mixed up. And without、um, understanding on Tai San Gan Yin Pian, this book, it's very easy to get sway into you know what we thought is okay, you know, to do once or twice, and then、uh, might end up you know becoming a person who is who we who we don't want to be,、um, because easily people in authority with authority in the context of people with in charge of someone or in charge of some organization in charge of A certain task or role, they need to be、uh, aware. Something they need、uh, cannot. It's the line they cannot cross.、Um, and and this one talks about、uh, mixing the, the priorities, confusing the priorities. What is right? What is wrong?、Um, over here in the stories, because this Taishan has their own、uh, notations. So the most simplest explanation is for pe people who do bad. You know, we do not acknowledge it. We do not condone it. For people who do good,、uh, we should not say,、uh, we should not cover it up, or we should not twist the narratives so that people,、um, how to say, stay away from it. So it should, it should be the, the the right way should be. We need to encourage people 
you know, to to be more kind, to be more um, open, to be more how to say, um, how to say, um, abide by law and stuff like that. We should not condone. We should not um condone anything that is not good. So this is the simplest way to understand it. But in terms of application in the everyday life, people with um, strong sense of morals, people with strong sense of um, what is the moral compass, uh, print principles, strong principles, they have wisdom to distinguish right and wrong, good and bad. And this, the importance of able to distinguish this one is very important to your organization or to your family. You know, uh, what line you cannot cross in terms of, you know, relationships and all the stuff or in, in terms of your company or your, whatever you are managing. Um, w- what's the operating principle you cannot do? What things you cannot do, uh, even though it might be a shortcut, you know, for constructions, you know, taking a cut here and then there, or in 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 um, in, in uh, commodity trading, you need to, you know, uh, under uh, cut, uh, do some, you know, cartel behaviors like price fixing or that. I'm going very t- technical. The thing is, this line cannot cross because once you cross it, you you um. You might pull your whole family or your whole the, the the team that you follow that follows you or the group that you manage the whatever things uh, you're taking care of in charge of uh, down to a path of um, no return. It might hurt, hurt them. So for for a for a town, for a country, the whole nation needs to know what is right and wrong, and set a standards. You know the not other than law because law is very very di- uh, very literal. What we're talking about is the culture, you know, what is right, what is wrong. Uh, that's a very tricky one, like abortion or something like that. What is right, what is wrong? So this is something we can talk about. What what is fine? What is what is okay? What is not okay? Like for now, you know, minors we're taking really serious um, uh, serious law and serious uh, cultural implications on someone who uh, offend uh, assaulted the minor or something like that. So we're taking care of our children very seriously. So this is the culture of the nation, of the modern world. So in, in, in terms of, in that context, we can understand that as things get bigger, it's easier to get muddy in this because not everyone, we are not made of a piece of, you know, um, cube. Uh, everything is tidy and nice. We all have a different way to see the world and stuff, but uh, there are lines that just cannot be crossed. and it's very important to distinguish them properly. So in that context, because um, I'm reading the um, annotations, stories are not really pressing that each. So there's one very famous story from ancient China, but uh, I'll open up for discussion after these two, uh, and then we, we, we can discuss it further uh, before we move on. So, So the story for the first part Consider evil to be just and good to be evil. Basically, mixed up, right, uh, mixed up what is right and wrong. Um, the positive example is in Song Dynasty. There's a person go by the name Mr. Yi. The way he treat people, his um, his character, the way he teach people, his students, is very clear. Like his principle is very clear. You know, this is right. This is wrong. And everyone knows that, and everyone really loves to be with him, learn from him because. He's, you know, he's easy to, uh, how to say, his priority is very clear, no matter what happened. And this builds up confidence and respect in an organization, in a, as a person, as a leader, you know, what is not tolerable, what is tolerable. Basically, this can be used in your context, in your career, in your family. In the family settings, like Di Zhi Gui is the standard itself. So uh, Alex is the teacher of Di Zhi Gui. And it itself is a tool. It's a it's a how to say not a tool. It's a guide. It's a it's a, it helps you to build up the framework, the priorities. What is right, what is wrong, and then the right way to do it is we practice it ourselves, internalize it. It becomes part of our culture, our character, like reading, like drinking water, and then when we have children or you have students or stuff like that, it brings down to them just by your example. That's it. So, this, this thing can be solved. This considered evil to be just and good to be evil. Mixing things up, um, 
can be solved by reading a lot of these sutras and good books and talking about it, clear it out with um, uh, people like masters or, you know, with us, we can bring it up to, to, to people with um, good cultivated, uh, cultivation like masters, share wu and stuff. So, so this thing, we kind of we learn it as we go, um, get better at it. So this Mr. Yi is such a person. He has a very clear boundary. He has a very clear guideline to his students. And he exemplifies his, uh, he practiced what he preached. Before he died, all right, before he died, um, he even wrote a letter to Mr. Fan. This Mr. Fan is very famous uh, in, in the Chinese world. It's called Fan Zhongyan. He's a very famous uh, prime minister. And uh, he's very, how to say, um, clean in terms of, um, you know, no bribery, in terms of conducts, uh, everything is exemplified. And the karma of that is his family for 800 years does not go away. Always have, their, his offspring always have good position and good, um, good attitude, good culture. It was passed down generation by generation. So like this is way to teach them um, and manners and what is right, what is wrong. And because of that, they accumulate good karma, good habits means good karma. And then they get to the higher places easier. You know, their life is getting better. So for 800 years, so they do not, their family is good. Just like Leo Fan's family as well, who wrote this a bit closer to us, still on. Still ongoing, very good. His uh, offspring. So back to the point, Mr. Fan really respect this Mr. Yi. They're all in the same time. And when Mr. Fan saw that Mr. Yi has um, already preparing to write his own obituary, he's like, I'm ready to, uh, I'm, my time is up because he's very um, old now. Uh, I'm ready to go. So everyone's like trying to visit him to say goodbye to him before he go. So by the time Mr. Fan reaches his house, Mr. Yi already sat there and closed his eyes. Um, he he washed himself and dressed pro properly and sit in front of the courtyard in the in his uh, residence and then just appear to be you know serenely passed away. So Mr. Fine was very sad that he didn't manage to send him off for last time. But um, when he was crying so sadly, Mr. Fine, Mr. Yi suddenly opened his eyes and <laughs> talked to Mr. Fine. Didn't I already wrote letters to you and say goodbye to you? Why are you still crying? Uh, you know, everything, you know, life, you know, when there's life, there's death. When there's death, there's life. You know, life and death is a, is a, is natural. Uh, didn't you know, Mr. Fan? So, you know, this is like, a, actually like a Bodhisattva showing, like, you know. Um, so, Mr. Yi, once he finished and he said goodbye and then he just go. <laughs> he just passed away like that. So, it shows that a person with that, you know, clear mind, when he, when he navigate this world, his conduct is very clear, crystal clear. There's a line he don't cross. He holds to it for the rest of his life, pass it down to his students, to his offspring, descendants, to his colleagues and all that. So that's a good part of, um, you know, identifying what is right, what is wrong and use it in your own life. So second half, before we go into uh, that, is to foolishly align oneself with evil people and avoid good people. That's very important, guys. Every everything, including your relationship, including your job, you know, what kind of acquaintance you make, you know, decide where you are. Even in Buddhism, we talk about the importance of shanyo, good friends, um, uh, not just good friend. Um, importance of ha having a friends of virtue, a virtuous friend, the one who can bring you to the towards a brighter path, a better path, uh, in life. And we've seen a lot of um case happening in society where people just let astray because of you know they hooked up on something because of their friends bringing them into that um, circle and gets on and on and on and on it spiral downwards some of them manage to get out some of them say no comment to them but some of them just like that gone so it's very important they might not be evil evil but they might be lost as well and it's very important not to Get lo uh, be lost with the rest of them. You know, if you're aware, you know, once you're aware what is this is wrong, either bring them out of there or you know stay away from it if you can. That's the basics of it of this teaching. But if we apply properly, um, yeah. 
So if we if we if we step into this trap and you know not able to identify uh, because you can't see people directly, you know, ritual tendency it takes time to know one's heart. You can't just you have that ability to know people straight away. Some people have strong intuition. Some people, but in most normal cases, it takes time to see their real self coming out, the conducts and everything. The point is, you need to have a bright eye in 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 your conduct. You know, in in terms of um, uh, building up relationship with people, friends or colleagues or anything. You know what they say and what they do. You know, are they the same thing? Um, the way they treat their family, the way the way they treat someone close to them outside the public eyes. Uh, that's very important. And also, this is also reminded ourselves, am I also consistent as well? Am I also um, not uh, uh, being consistent? If I'm not being consistent, means that uh, in front of you guys, I, I appear very good and stuff, and then behind the scene, no. So no one wants to be friends with these kind of people. So we don't want to be that people. So this point is more about, um, you know, who you attract. I mean, you know, you, 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 um, you know, you being with the person who you, uh, who, who, who you attract, right? The characters and all that. So going into this, um, details, avoid people who has, um, issues, you know, the con as in, sorry, avoid, um, what do I say, getting yourself mixed up with the crowd, that crowd that is, um, going to bring a lot of troubles. Unless they are really close friend to you and they do listen to you, yes, bring them out of there. Otherwise, it's depending on the condition. But general rule is just avoid it altogether. It will save you a lot of pain. <clears throat> and then, um, in terms of stories, this one is about why would one person want to be aligned with you people? in the first place, right? Everyone wants to be good. Everyone wants to be, you know, respected, well-loved. Why would people want to do that? A lot of times it's because in the day-to-day -day life, things get muddier and muddier by our own self-interest. And that self-interest comes in the form of powers, comes in the form of you kind of know. So the point is, um, whatever the position you are in, wherever you are, you must always remember one thing. Is this right for the organization? Is this right for the people under my care? If it's not right, doesn't matter if your interest is um, harm or not harm, or rather if you're benefited or not benefited yourself, you must do it. If it's wrong, now even though it benefits you, benefits you, you know, in terms of your, maybe your um, coffers or in your um, wealth, your um or some opportunities, but it does bring harm to the organization that you're in charge of or brings harm to the associates or the, your families or all that, then don't do that. We can talk about what it is about or what, what, what concrete example by sharing with each other later. So basically, that's the, more, um, that's the point of these uh, phrases. I think this way we can understand why they say that. And I'll bring in a story. Yeah, it doesn't scratch the itch. Basically, these people in the court, you know, they fight against each other and one guy is trying to pin something on them. One of those dramas you used to watch in those TVs. And then, this is actually real life. And then they, um, you know, one of them got you know, accused of things they didn't do and then they got killed. And then when he was killed and then he pass on the dream to his wife and say, there's something going on in there, take it out, and then they reveal it to the public, and that person was being caught. Basically, mix in with the wrong crowd, uh, and do, you know, un immoral wrong things, and get deeper and deeper into that rabbit hole, and end up uh, the, him getting himself killed, or in our case, demoted, or, you know, um, that's it, gone. Career, reputation, all gone. So that's it for this part. Before we move on, let's talk about, um, let's discuss first. Uh, I don't want to uh, take too much time because it's already halfway there. All right, first, um, my discussion is here actually. Give me a sec. Why does the treatise remind us about the importance to know what is right and what is wrong? So what is the mat matrix? Like, 
What is the measurements? How do we measure it? Or what's your ruler? Anyone wants to share? You can bring in examples or things you see in your work, in your life, or what you hear. You have pointed out a good point of mat mat matrix in respect. You know, it has to be fair, has to be reasonable, has to be, you know, um, uh, you need to explain to them, give them a, you know, a, a head on and a head on of what is right, what is wrong, what is the rules in my, in my classrooms. You know, this is not, this has already been explained to you many times and now you've been crossing this line again and again. I gave you like a few warnings. Now you have not. So what do you think you should do about it? Something like that gives them a sense of understanding like, oh yeah, teacher, yeah. teacher yeah. Alex told me yeah. many times and I still haven't do it. Most of the kids will probably just accept whatever um, form of, um, what does it say punishment, but a form of correction uh, and, uh, decision from you. So basically, we as long as we give them a, li a leeway, I mean, give them a, 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 a very clear line like this uh, Mr. Yi saying, I think what he did is he set line, he set a rules, basic rules, you know. No one, you know, uh, during the class can walk across, uh, you know, the, the places when the class is in sessions. Uh, no one can chit chat during that, something like that, a few rules. And if they keep breaking it and you give them few warnings, no, then, yeah, once you figure out how we um, hold on to the principle and actually use it, it's very helpful for you because your your mind will be at ease. You don't all you don't go to the path of you know extremes, overthinking or or that. You you get less affected by what others say is about, and you kind of know. Um, you get better actually. You get better at at uh, emotional management and you know especially with students. It's I haven't been dealing with young kids student a lot i dealt with a few times back in brisbane and that's what traumatized me a little bit is i did easily get lashed out and i don't want to do that to the young kids so that's why i need to learn so all right so this one uh obviously uh we talk about that uh on the first part uh, thank you alex and uh we have um also talk about you know align ourselves so we'll move on to the next one begins to talk about it uh, when we go to the discussion uh, feel free to chip in if you guys uh, have something to share. I'll create an opening for you guys. So, um, the, the second part, the second pair, all right, is to uh, in Chinese. In English, is um, person in in authority, in power. You know, well, sacrifice the lives, interests, and welfare of the people of subordinates for the attainment of personal honors and career success. It's what just talk about. Obviously, not as dramatic as that, but it happens. For instance, a judge increasing penalties or a persecutor overcharging to appear tough on crime. That reminds me of war and terror and war and drugs and Iraq war. Oh my God, there's so many things. Sorry, guys. Um, the thing is, to in order to achieve a certain KPI that looks good on your face in the modern terms, you do something that actually end up killing a lot of people. Yeah, drone strike and all that. It actually ends up creating a atmosphere of fear. I think it's very relevant to us. Oh God. So yes. So this is what happened in in our world nowadays. Is um, it, even back then, right? But it's just um, in order to reach a KPI, in order to look good on your profile or anything, uh, if we have to um, um, resort to this kind of uh things, these kind of underhanded tactics or, you know, um, raise the flag of, you know, war and something, something uh, appear to be righteous and then ends up, you know, killing your own people, killing the people from foreign lands, then it, it warrants a lot of uh, reflection. What's the whole point of this? Wouldn't the money be better spent on educating a better next generation healthcare, uh, you know, giving, giving a next generation a better life, a, a hope, uh, teach them something, you know, while realistic also bright human stuff, you know, like being uh, like something like this, you know, uh, educations. So the money should be spent more on educations. So this one, this is... Um, can be used in many contexts. You know, this one, the, the, the obvious one they use is on uh, as a government officials. You're in power. You're in charge. You're in charge of budgets as treasurer. You're in charge of military. 
defense, as a uh, minister of uh, defense, stuff like that. And if um, in order to advance your career, you hurt your own subordinates, you hurt um, the people uh, in the jurisdiction under your care, then this is the transgression. Obviously, it has it, it has consequences, and the consequences may not be seen now. Maybe you have enough karma to good karma in the past life to cover it. We're using the karma terms here, but for sure it will come and bite you in the end. And if anyone's ever think about they can escape from this kind of, you know, uh, hey, so sorry, why is it escape from this kind of um, behaviors? You know, just because they are powerful, they have powerful backing families behind them, they can escape the laws because, you know, even nowadays, the law that people set can easily be circumvented if you have enough money, enough power, and not everyone will face justice that easy. But karma is above the law. And also, karma is always will come no matter where, when, what, what, who you are. When time is come, it will come. And it will come ruthlessly, brutally. And this is, this is what the story is trying to tell us. Now, we talk about a bright one, bright side, like people who don't do that, right? Uh, for example, there's a few examples we can use in ancient times and then we uh, use it uh, and reflect on it in our own case. So... To use a very nice metaphor, is it wrong to seek career advancement? Is it wrong to seek, you know, improvements in your life? No. So this metaphor says that when a candle meets the darkness of the night, it illuminates its surroundings. Right. So it has the merits of illuminate illumination. It has its own use. It's been appreciated at a time like this. In the in the absence of light, candle is appreciated for its illumination. When the boat receives the buoyancy of the water, right, it becomes a useful thing that can carry cargoes and ship from one to another. So everything in the in the world, in our world, as long as you know we follow in due cost, you know follow the law, follow the path, the right path, don't harm people and anything. You will get what you want eventually in the end. So why do we want to harm our, you know, either loved ones, our um, colleagues, our subordinates, or the people under our care, under our jurisdictions, um, in order to get something that you will get eventually if you follow the right path, you know, the path of no harm, ahimsa, Path of no harm. So, <laughs> as long as you follow your conscience, you follow what is fair and reasonable, you improve yourself, you will get what you want. Uh, your merits will accumulate by its own. Um, as long as you don't sway from what is right and wrong. There's no need for you to to use tactics or anything, machinations, to, just to get it. What you can get is already um, part of part of the things that you will get eventually. It's called Ming Li Yu Si Zhong Xi Yu Ming Li Wu Si Mo Qiang Qiu. That's the first step. That's what Liao Fan is trying to say. Is you know, like what Liao Fan before he met Master Yun Gu, he was like, "Uh, what's the point of me studying? I went to university, sit there, and just meditate because everything that was predicted was actually correct." While it was a bit passive. But he already knows that everything he do, as long as he don't do a lot of evil things, sway away from it, then he will get what he want or what he steal. But in this case, back to this point, um, there are cases where people trying to rush this thing ahead, trying to get that sweet um, taste very sooner. And in in order to do that, what they do is as an army, you know, they lead the soldiers uh, in the in the absence of the eyes you know of the public of their own country in the foreign land what can do they can um, some of them might you know unleash their own uh, subordinates to do lootings killings still happens guys 
And that itself is already a commitment of an offense, karmic offense, legal offense. Think of the controversy we have in Australia on the um, SA uh, as the, the special operation troops in Afghanistan. It's still being investigated until nowadays. This is a result of unrestrained um, discipline on someone with power of violence, uh, a power of inflicting violence. If it's unrestrained, this is what happened. So as an army, they're trying to get uh, more, how to say, hit counts on um, KPI. The KPI is to capture this and capture that. And in order to look good on their profile, some people just, you know, use this kind of um, uh, ways to gain it, speed it up. As a government officials, um, they might uh, in ancient times a lot. This, uh, this happens in ancient times easily because there's no parliament like we have nowadays. Um, they just they can just add tax just like that. You know, like suddenly today um, I was charged thirty percent, and tomorrow they can just charge fifty percent, just because someone higher up needs more money to build their projects or their private pool garden, something like that. So this happens a lot of times throughout the duration of our histories, whether in China or in foreign uh, countries and anywhere, not foreign, anywhere around the world. So as a prosecutor over here, they mention it, you know, in order to look good, look like, you know, I'm a chief of justice, you know, I should have a, uh, a steel determination to dispense justice. So they actually, what they actually do is they, they use a more torture tools they use more underhanded tactics, dishonorable means to get uh, results. A lot of them are being, um, how do I say, in order to rush things ahead, you might miss a lot of details and end up persecuting wrong people. And most of them were being lopped off the head, just like that, before they got to say, before they got, you know, pardoned or got, um, got, got appealed to the court. In the old times, all right. And nowadays, even something's happening, like someone being trapped in a jail for ten years as a uh, uh, rape allegations. Only end up, it is not the person who uh, uh, accuse it admit it ten years after. Obviously, we can bring in the elements of karma in the past life that makes it understandable. But in 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 current terms, you know, especially as a fuck one, as a persecutor, as a judge. It's very important to be really pain in the ass on the details. Otherwise, you might end up hurting someone else's life. You know, life is time. Time is life. And locking them up for 10 years is killing them as well. Might as well be killing them for 10 years. Okay, so yes, in order to speed it up, people do this. And this is still happening. Just because they want to get that, what they, what, to get what they do earlier. They do that. And what do they do? They get lesser in return, actually. So, what is a good example? What is a good example that do not copy this problem of you know, torturing your subordinates or harming your people in order to get what you want? People like, um, actually not, not what you want, people who have sense of justice, sense of you know, what is right and wrong, you know, caring for the world, caring for the public, caring for the people. It's all we need, just be a human. So, in Song Dynasty, there is a general by the name of Cao Bing. When he attacked the southern China, south of the rivers, he didn't kill a people. That is a remarkable achievement, guys. To launch a military campaign without actually taking one life. That's, that's very good. And he did his job without killing people. It's, it shows a high level of restraint they have. Disciplines on his people. Um, in Han Dynasty, Mr. Ji'an, to in order to save starvation, his you know, country people from starvation, he even forged his his emperor. Uh, he even forged the emperor's signature on the documents, ordering the you know local government to open up the granaries to feed the people. So he's waiting to get his head lopped off. In order, because back then when you do that, that's it. He's willing to uh, put his life on the table in order to get millions of people f the food they need after being starved from drought. So, yeah, look at that. That's the merit, guys. 
And in Han Dynasty, Mr. Yu, uh, when he was uh, one of the, I think he's the prosecutors or one of the um, adjutants to the judge. Basically, he's uh, serving in the in the courthouse. When every time there is one person being accused of committing the crime, um, he always double check, double check. He always makes sure it is um, the uh, the punishment befits the crime. The prison is actually the criminal. So he has made to a level where his reputation is every time this man judge, no one will say I'm innocent because he's judging it really fair. He's following the procedure. He's actually showing up good reasonings, uh, sound judgment. And this comes with time. This comes with patience. And this comes with not asking for reward or high, high, uh, you know, some bonus stuff like that. Just getting your job done right, that doesn't matter. And he has managed to build up this kind of reputation where every time he pass on the sentence, everyone say he's right, he's fair, and he is. So this is the person we should aspire to be. Basically, that's what they say. So those people are number one in their job in their countries. Not they are number one because they're doing things right. They take their time, they do what is right in order to get the results that, that is actually as desired and helpful to the people. And some of them even willing to sacrifice their life for that. So that is pretty much the opposite of what this is. And they got merits in return. Merits doesn't have to come in terms of money and wealth. They, this, of course, they got promoted, but it also comes in the form of you know karma. They pass down to you, your children, your siblings, your families, or your students, stuff like, stuff like that. You know, these things happen. We are also enjoying the karma, good karma from Master Ching Kong. Uh, all these facilities, all this um, accumulation of people, Ren Xing, Xiang Ling Ju. People, why are they willing to gather together? And why are they willing to uh, use their weekend to help the temple and stuff like that? Because they all respect the merits of Master. They respect the teachings. So they're willing to do it. So this is how you change the world by just starting from yourself. Um, I think I'll leave the last one uh, again for next time. So I don't want to waste too much of your time. Um, the last one is, the second half of the second pair is to cajole favor from one superiors by schemes and flattery by abetting their machination or misconduct. Um, this is very important, especially in the context of work. You know, just because that person is in charge and the person is in high position, we cannot suck it up. Like, as in, we cannot blindly follow. Yes, we can be courtiers. We don't have to be a pain, uh, a pain for them, a pain for the team. But when if something matters with the business, if we put in my field, or if something matters with the, you know, conducts, compliance and all that, we must speak up. So that's, that comes to my second questions on that um, discussion. Um, in here, they talk about this second part, Chan Shan Xi Zhi. Um, what is that? Chan Shan means the Zhou favor from the superiors, trying to get onto the good side, to gain their favors. Xi Zhi means from that, you, you know, get some good benefits in return. All this is tr people trying to better their life, but in the wrong way. You see the difference. There, there is a difference. These people um, might uh, seem like everyone else. They want to improve themselves. They want to improve their, you know, quality of life, their positions, their power, and all that. But they do it like that, and it ends up with even worse consequences. So over here, they talk about this this sentence. Um, people who are in the authority. Because this is part two, talking about people easily, these crimes easily committed by people in authority, should always make a decision based on sound judgment, based on reasons, what is fair and reasonable. The very first sentence of this section is, what is fair, what is reasonable, is it right by them, right? Is my conscience allowing it? If they think like that, they would not do this kind of thing. There's no need for that. The environment, the team environment won't be toxic. It will be an open one, and people will still be polite and stuff. They but they they're willing to speak out. They're willing to say what is wrong in the team. Then you improve your own organization. You improve yourself as well. You get better because you're a real thing. 
you're not a fake. So that's basically what it is about. Um, so as a people in that position, making a decision that affects a lot of people, um, we always must follow what is reasonable, what is right. You know, what is the what is the law? Beyond that, what is good for the society as much as we can in our power. That kind of mindset is all you need. And from there, you can talk about the details and all that. That's fine. On the other hand, people who are from the subordinate positions, which most of us are, you know, working for a manager, working for a uh, team leader, stuff like that. Our job is to make sure they don't go to the wrong, um, they don't make wrong decisions that harms the group, the team, the whole country, uh, company, in the government, the whole country, or in the family, the whole family, you know, as a children, uh, as a as a son, as as a grandchildren, stuff like that. Obviously, we don't have like a big powerful family like Trumps or something like that. But even in small family, we also have decisions to make. Always bring out. So in work, in family, in personal, between your friends as well, uh, you know, with your senpai or, you know, a xue zhang or stuff like that, in your student club, stuff like that. We also need to have that mindset. So as a person in subordinate position, we must always, uh, re- always try to, how to say, um, help them to better the organization. That's why do things for the public. Now, don't do it for your own uh, favors. And it will come in the right way back to you. And you will receive more than what you could receive from this kind of underhanded tactics. Seriously, this is what the whole Tyson campaign is about. If we keep reading it, you can see this whole morals. It's, it's just too costly to go on that path of you know trying to speed up things only to end up with even more worst consequences to you first you and then the people around you uh, so yeah story wise uh, I will not go too much but yes um, we'll talk about this uh, this one we'll leave it for next week this is quite straightforward Sun Bao Si Song the four gratitudes very close to this okay last one and then before we go, anyone wants to share, uh, when do we speak up and stand steadily on our principle in our life? You know, how do we speak up? You know, when do we speak up? You know, how do we not make confused between, you know, trying to gain a name for ourselves instead of actually speaking up, to actually say something substantial, useful. And our session here with uh, uh, 10 times Ami Tofo. Uh, me to for a 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 me to for let's dedicate our merits. May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Thank you, guys.